Hi all and welcome to my latest video. Today I'll be discussing one of the big buzzwords surrounding blockchain and crypto. I do feel as though the term has a lot of misconceptions around it and a lot of noise from the wrong places and some in the right places. I hope this video can shed some light surrounding the topic and help to offer an understanding on how it relates to the blockchain space. As you can see, ISO 20022. ISO, which stands for International Organization for Standardization, is a non-governmental global organization based in Switzerland and comprised of 167 national bodies. Well, what do they do? The members and experts come together to develop standards for various fields and practices and solve global challenges. In simple terms, they come together to form an established and agreed way of doing something. There's over 20,000 standards covering around 97 fields, and this covers areas like healthcare, banking, shipping, engineering, and much more. The standards help to prevent reoccurring problems, create transparency, identify risks and opportunities, provide international regulation to help save time and reduce friction of international barriers. So now that we know what ISO do and who they are, let's get into the standard. ISO 20022 defines a detailed financial messaging standard that covers a wide range of business processes. It aims to replace older messaging standards that are limited in their capabilities and interoperability. While the current or previous standards were widely used and still are, they have their own limitations and drawbacks, including being designed for specific use cases, lacking flexibility and not being easily interoperable with other systems. Before ISO 20022, there were several financial messaging standards, and obviously some are still in place around the world, many of which were developed by financial institutions or industry groups. Some of the most common ones, like SWIFT MT, developed by SWIFT and used by banks and other financial institutions for money transfers, the Electronic Data Interchange for Administration, Commerce and Transport, developed by the United Nations for Electronic Data Exchange in various industries like finance. So obviously these are just a few examples, but the aim here is to get everyone on the same page and to set a standard for global communications and solve the miscommunication factor in a simple and uniform manner. Some of the processes that are looked at being streamlined include payments, securities, trading, foreign exchange, trade finance and more. The fact that it tackles all these issues collectively allows risk to be reduced and adds credibility to the security of these processes. ISO 20022 messages are structured in standardised XML format which allows for richer and more detailed information to be included in messages, enabling more efficient and accurate processing of financial transactions. So the standard defines a set of message components, like fields, data types and codes, that are used to construct the message and convey the information about the financial transaction. So why XML? Well, XML, or Extensible Markup Language, is a flexible and versatile markup language that has a number of advantages. In no particular order, XML is designed to be extensible, which means that users can create their own custom tags and attributes to represent any type of data they want. This allows for great flexibility in defining the structure and format of that data. Interoperability, so obviously XML is widely adopted standard which means that it can be used by different applications and platforms so that makes it easier for the exchange of data between different systems and organizations it's also human readable so that it can be easily understood and edited by humans that makes it easier for developers and users to work with this data without needing specialized tools or expertise the separation of data and presentation so that is XML is used to represent data and is separate from any presentation or layout information. This separation of concern makes it easier to manage and modify data without impacting the visual design or formatting of the document. 
XML is scalable and can be used to represent large and complex data structures. It can also be used to represent small and simple data structures. So that makes it a versatile tool for data representation. XML also supports Unicode, which means that it can be used to represent data in a variety of languages and character sets. So obviously, this aspect will play a big part in solving that global challenge. It's also a wide industry adopted, so there's a lot of industries at the moment, including finance, that already use this, which means there's a large pool of developers and tools to work with XML. ISO 20022 also includes a set of standardised message exchange protocols which provide a framework for the secure and reliable exchange of financial messages over a variety of communication channels, including the internet, private networks and other electronic communication channels. The messages can be sent and received using a variety of these protocols depending on the needs and capabilities of financial institutions involved. Some of the common technologies used for sending and receiving these ISO 20022 messages could be financial messaging networks. So these are private secure networks that are specifically designed for the exchange of financial messages. A prime example would be SWIFT, which is used for international payments. And then another Fedwire, which is used for domestic payments in the US. Another technology would be APIs, which is application programming interfaces. APIs are software interfaces that let applications communicate with each other. Financial institutions can use APIs to integrate ISO 20022 messaging capabilities into their existing applications, letting them send and receive ISO messages directly from their own systems. There's also web-based interfaces. So many financial institutions provide web-based interfaces that let users log in and send and receive these ISO messages through a browser-based application. These interfaces often provide additional features such as message tracking and reporting. Another would be file transfer, so ISO 20022 messages can be exchanged through FTP file transfer protocol or SFTP secure file transfer protocol. This can obviously be a useful option for larger batch transactions or in, for institutions that don't have real-time connectivity to financial messaging networks. In addition to the technologies used for sending and receiving ISO messages, financial institutions may also use additional technologies like encryption, digital signatures and firewalls to ensure the security and integrity of the messaging systems are in place. So these technologies can collectively protect against unauthorized access, fraud, and other security risks. So obviously to tie that in with the blockchain space and how this all can come together, obviously that depends on the blockchain company and their use case. In terms of adoption, I believe it's important to note there's a lot of noise around the blockchain companies implementing the standards in their own processes. However, there's a huge misconception around what ISO actually is and what benefits it can bring the blockchain companies. So some blockchain companies have implemented this ISO messaging standard in their systems to support interoperability and compatibility with traditional financial institutions. One of those companies is Ripple. Ripple is a blockchain-based company that provides global payment solutions to financial institutions. Ripple's payment protocol called RippleNet supports ISO 20022 messaging standards to facilitate interoperability with existing financial messaging networks. Ripple has also been actively participating in the ISO 20022 standardization process. In 2018, the company joined the ISO 20022 registration management group, which is responsible for overseeing the registration and maintenance of this standard and its definitions. By joining this group, Ripple is able to contribute to the development of the standard and ensure that it meets the needs of its customers and the broader financial industry. Additionally, Ripple has also been developing a range of tools and services to help its customers integrate ISO 20022 into their existing systems. For example, the company offers an ISO 20022 converter that can translate ISO 20022 messages into other formats such as Swift MT messages or proprietary message 
formats used by other financial institutions. Another company which is obviously not in the blockchain space but has a big relation to it, SWIFT. So SWIFT obviously recently re- launched its own ISO 20022 compliant messaging service called SWIFT GPI, Global Payments Innovation. So although SWIFT is obviously not a blockchain company, they are a major player in the financial industry and also a member of the same RMG group as Ripple. And they have been working together to adopt this standard for their own messaging system. This is significant for the crypto industry as many other cryptocurrency exchanges and other companies use SWIFT to facilitate cross-border payments. Corda, a distributed ledger platform developed by R3, a consortium of banks and financial institutions. So Quarter supports this ISO standard and is designed to facilitate the exchange of financial messages between different systems. Hyperledger Fabric. So Hyperledger Fabric is an open source blockchain platform that's designed for enterprise use cases. It supports the ISO 20022 messaging standards and includes a range of features that are tailored to meet the needs of financial institutions. It's worth noting that the use of ISO 20022 messaging standards is becoming an increasingly common step in the financial industry, and many other blockchain companies are likely to support these standards in the future. It's important to understand that because a blockchain company doesn't speak about the adoption, doesn't necessarily mean it's not complying with the standards. And also, just because they do, does it make it a huge advantage? Obviously, the advantages of doing so are clear, but it has to tie in with the blockchain use case. And we must start to think about the partnerships in place and an approach like Ripple, which has supported its partners in moving to this standard, which can be a great way to pull the companies along. I think it's important to note here this transition to actually move to this ISO standard is not something that's so straightforward. But obviously the advantages are clear and if everyone is doing so, then obviously the financial institutions, especially the banks, will have to find a way to adopt this standard and also keep up with the volume of payments in real time. Obviously in the short term, you can add a translation layer for this ISO standard, which obviously will solve the problem in the short term. But obviously when you have this standard being recognised all across the industry, the challenge would be to implement this early as possible and I think the major players have already done so and we'll start to see this standard being more widely recognised in the next few months. I hope this video can shed some light on this standard Obviously, I will look into other companies, especially in the blockchain space, that are looking to adopt this standard and what kind of benefits it brings them. I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.